smartest giant in town. Written by Julia Donoso. Illustrated by Axel Shepard. George was a giant. The scruffiest giant, giant in town. He always wore the same pair and old brown sandals and the same old pet shop gown. I wish I wasn't the scruffiest giant in town, he said sadly. But one day, George had his a new shop. It was full of smart clothes. So he bought a smart shirt, a smart pair of trousers, a smart belt, a smart stripy tie, some smart socks with diamonds on the side, and a pair of smart shiny shoes. Now I'm the smartest guy in town, um. he says proudly. George left his old clothes behind in the shop. He was about to go home when he heard a sound. On the pavement stood a giraffe. He was sleeping sadly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my neck, said the giraffe. It's so very long and so very cold. I wish I had a long warm scarf. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his giant big tie. It didn't match my socks anyway, he said, as he wound it round and round the giraffe's neck. It made a wonderful scarf. Thank you, said the giraffe. As George towards home, he said to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe, but lonely up and down. And the smartest man in town. George came to a river. On a boat stood a goat. He was bleating loudly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sail, said the goat. It blew away in the storm. I wish I were I had a strong new sail for my boat. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his new white shirt. It coming untucked anyway, he said, and she tied it to the mast of the girl's boat. It made a magnificent sail. Thank you, said the goat. George strolled on, singing to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt on a boat is a sail for a goat. My shoe got lonely up and down in the smartest time in time. George came to a tiny room house. Beside the house stood a white mouse with lots of baby mice. They were all squeaking. What's the matter, asked George. It's our house, squeaked the mother mouse. It burned down, and now I have nowhere to live. I wish you had a nice new house. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his one of his shiny shoes. It was giving me blisters anyway, he said. And the mouse and her babies scrambled inside. The shoe made a perfect home for them. Thank you, they squeaked. George had to hop along the road now, but George didn't mind. He hopped on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold rat. My shirt on a boat is a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. But lonely up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a campsite. On a tent stood a fox. 
He was crying. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sleeping bag, said the fox. I dropped it in a puddle. I wish I had a warm, dry sleeping bag. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his one of his socks with diamonds of the side. Was tickling my toes anyway, he said. As the fox was not going to, it made a very fine sleeping bag. Thank you, said the fox. George hopped on, saying to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold river, my shirt on a boot as a sail for a boat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. A lonely up and down. I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a big, squelchy bug. Beside the bug to the dog, who was howling. What's the matter? asked George. It is bug said the dog. I need to get across, but I keep getting stuck in the mud. I wish there was a safe, dry path. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his smart new belt. It was crushing my tummy anyway, he said, as he laid it down over the bog. It made an excellent path. Thank you, said the dog. The wind started to blow, but George did mine. He hopped on, saying to himself, My tie is a scarf for a cold river. My shirt on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. My belt helped the dog who was crossing a bug. But... My trousers are falling down. I'm the coldest giant in town. Suddenly, George felt sad and shakily, and not at all smart. He stood on one foot and thought, I'll have to go back to the shop and buy some more clothes, he decided. He turned around and hopped all the way back to the shop. But when he got done, it was close. Oh no, cried George. He sank down onto the drawer's back, and a tear ran down his nose. He felt as sad that all the animals he had met on his way home. Then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a bag with something familiar poking out of the top. George took a closer look. My gown, he yelled. My dear old gown and sandals. George put them on. They felt wonderfully comfortable. I'm the coziest giant in town, he cried, and he danced back home along the road. Outside his front door stood all the animals he had helped. They were carrying enormous mm -hmm. presents. Come on, George, they said. Open it. George untied the ribbon. Inside was a beautiful gold paper crown and a car. Look inside the car, George said to animals. <laughs> George put the crown on his head and opened the car. Inside, he said, your tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. You should turn a boat as a sail for a goat. You should use a house for a little white mouse. One of your socks is a bed for a fox. You belt up the dog who was crossing a book. So here is a very fine crown to go with the sandal single of the kindest giant in town. The end.